Hi, so my name is Gareth Hampson, and so I'm an ecologist and a postdoc researcher at Fitz University. I work in the animal, plant, and environmental sciences. So yeah, we've had some had some work accepted recently in science, and I think behind it all, the point is that animals matter. So so that's what the story is. That's what the story is about. And. It comes in and that scientists have just realized that you have to think about animals when you try to understand African ecology, and that will match the rest of the globe for that matter. The problem, of course, though, is that animals are gone from those landscapes, and so so many of those landscapes, we just don't have the populations that were there. Um, and that's the challenge that we took up, was to try and put the animals back into those landscapes. So Africa turns out to be the place to do that. Firstly, we've had far fewer extinctions here than elsewhere. And to us, we've got these amazing game reserves that still have pretty much intact populations. And so what we did was to then get uh, census data from those game reserves. And using our understanding of African ecology, uh, you know, so how soils and rainfall and vegetation influence animal abundances, we went back and predicted how many animals there were of all these different species in the landscapes that are now so radically transformed. Um, so yeah, so in a sense it's like stepping into a time machine and traveling back to Africa as, as it was a thousand years ago, which, which is fascinating. It's amazing to arrive there. You've got these dry areas where and there's not much forage, and then these very wet areas where you end up with not much forage because there's so many plants, but all that um, food is sitting up in the, in the forest canopy. So, very different, but quite similar in terms of the animals that, that you get there. there. There's some striking parallels, lots of small animals in those sorts of places. Um, in the in-between areas, uh, you get your classic African savannas. You've got drier savannas and wetter savannas. And the drier savannas are where you really want to go on safari. And it turns out that's where you're most of your national parks are. And you know, these are places that you know, teeming with zebra, giraffe, villages, you, you name it, they're all there. Then you, as your savannas get wetter, you tend to just get your, your bigger animals left. Fire also comes into the story there, and so you end up with these elephant and fire dominated landscapes. So you get these sort of broad ecological patterns that come out that are really focused on animals. That are there. These are really interesting, but um, our work this has some really cool applications that, that build from, from getting a handle on those patterns. So it's this platform to start exploring um, a whole bunch of new questions. So we can try and understand uh, current distributions of vegetation or other animals, say dung beetles, animal related, um, but whose current distributions were shaped by animals in the past. So we've got a sense of what that, those past distributions were like. So that's, that's a whole avenue that's opening up. Something we're also looking at is how livestock have replaced wild populations. And you know, where have we seen lots of livestock uh, coming into landscapes? And why there? And to what extent do they substitute for the historical populations? Um, so for example, there's no equivalent to white rhino amongst our livestock populations. You know? So um, what are the ecosystem functions consequences of, of these sorts of change. I think though that the most important application of our work is that we now have a way to fit animals into our global ecosystem models. And you know, these are the models that we use to try and understand where planet Earth is headed. You know, so fitting animals in there, particularly in places like Africa, is crucial. So you know, it's become clear that we have to include animals in our thinking um, in order to understand global processes. But the big deal for us is that we now have a way to do that. 